support for the PCR star scheme which was supervised. Of course, we are uh, uh, focusing on the unsupervised case. Uh, so, this is one option, one option to how to estimate G2. Uh, uh, another way to do it is to note that at the correct value of G2, so remember, if, if I don't know G2 and I try to estimate it by some value of Q, I, I, I get a one-dimensional set of solutions for rho, and at the correct value of G2, this rho is approximately a linear combination of the first two eigenvectors V1 and V2. So I can estimate G2 by two different ways. One is, is divide under 1 by n, and the other one is to look at the residual, scan over possible values of Q, and project out a, a, the component in the direction of V1, and, and find the value of Q, which, which, which minimizes this quantity. Okay? Uh, so, once I have an estimate of G2, I can solve the linear system of equations I had before, uh, just to answer your previous question, the system of linear equations, I don't solve it by least squares, I solve it more robustly, let's say by, by L1, or I try uh, to make things work in practice, you have to do many additional things, but uh, um, yes, and then I get my estimate of the weights, and uh, so if lambda 2 over the trace of the matrix is very small, I just take the first symbol component, if, the set, if let's say if this is larger, let's say than 5%, I, I'm, I'm going to the first one and, and the second one, and once I have my weights, I can also estimate the mean squared error, I have this formula, uh, I don't need to know the variance of y, I can just rank uh, 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 the regressors by this approximate formula, because I already have uh, uh, an estimate of rho. Okay? So, that's the algorithmic and theoretical part. Let's show you how it works. One question before. Yeah. How does the number of uh, experts, or experts uh, help? The, the uh, it helps a lot. I mean, uh, 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 um, so the more experts I have, uh, the more, uh, uh, let's say, my estimates of rho, they scale like 1 over square root of n, and then like 1 over m, or something like this. The more experts I have, Better. Yeah. But also, once you have more experts, it's, uh, I guess, less... Um, At some point, it would be not, not, not yeah, like plausible that the assumptions hold. Yeah. Okay? okay. Uh, if you bug me towards the end, I'll show you how I can try to find out if the assumptions hold or not. Okay? All right. So, experiments. Um, first, we took many publicly available regression data sets. We split them into train and test. On the train, we even split it further and, and, and trained many different uh, uh, regressors, support vector regression, kernel regression, linear regression, uh, lasso, decision trees, etc. M equals 10. And we then applied the, all of these regressors on the test data, so we had this matrix. And we compa compared the, our approach, which we call uh, unsupervised principal component regression, to, to various alternatives like the mean, the median. We also compared to this model with uh, Gaussian errors, and not, but I don't. Mm -hmm. It was also better than this. Actually, this is terrible, taking the face value, because this is something that does not work. It was uh, supervised. You also tried to compare? Yes, I'll, 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 I'll show you how bad we are from an oracle that just knew the ground truth and just did the least squares. Okay. How did you approximate the second moment of one? <laughs> So I don't need it. Notice that uh, I, I don't need it. I mean, if this... I just assume ah, that so, are. look, so this typically is a good estimate of, of G2. And so what, instead of going from 0 to variance of Y, I can go from 0 up to this quantity plus, let's say, one, one, let's say 10%. I can, I, can, I can look for G2 hat, either just take this... No, the, no, no, sorry, G3, I think, was like a variance of Y. I don't need that, so... You just need it for the assumption, but you don't use it. I, I use it here, but I don't really use it. I okay. can just take yeah, yeah. Q between lambda 1 over M, 90% of that, up to 110% of that. Yeah. So I don't really need it. Okay. Um, I 
use it in my graphs because, let's see, you see, if I know the values of y, I, I can get a good estimate of the mean squared error. So I, I use it in my plots. But I don't need, I don't need that value in my algorithm. Okay. All right, so many different data sets. Uh, I'll focus on, so first of all, uh, some, uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, not reality check, I'm missing the word, but uh, sanity check. check, exactly. Our model assumes or predicts that the matrix C will be approximately rank 1 or rank 2, so lambda 1 plus lambda 2 for the trace should be approximately 1, and it predicts that the, the true row should be a linear combination of V1 and V2, okay? So now let me show you a graph of all these many different data sets. On the x-axis I'm showing you lambda 1 plus lambda 2 over the trace. This is for those n, 10 different regressors that we trained. And here is the residual. This is the, the norm of uh, rho minus its projection divided by the norm of rho. Okay? Can you find the true rho? Yeah, I know the ground truth. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm really using, this is the sanity check. I'm using, okay, but this is just to see if on actual data, there is some mild chance that this may work. So first of all, we see that in many cases, indeed, C is approximately rank 1 or rank 2. And not only that, when, when this value is very close to 1, rho is indeed a linear combination of V1 and V2. So these are good data sets for us. These are maybe not so good. Uh, but uh, as a basic sanity check, that's a good, a good sign. Okay. Now let me show you some results on, on some selected data sets. So here is a data set where you can suggest a question. When you say not so good, it's in the context of the specific expert that you chose. Yes. Yeah. Could be some yeah, some yeah. Someone may have been able to construct other experts for which this would be better. Um, no, Gary suggested you take a subset of the yeah. Ah, yes, that's an excellent point. Yes, some of the data sets that we played with, some of the experts were, were really bad. They were like outliers. Yeah. When we do the whole thing, we remove, we have a method to detect them, to remove them. Maybe I, I should redo this after our detection and removal. That's a good point. But even just by itself is already... Can you use this criterion for removing, uh, I use playing a, uh, yes, with the right I, list of experts? Let, let's put it this way. If you give me a new data set and I compute uh, a, a lambda 1 plus lambda 2 for the trace of C, and that value is, let's say, only 70%, I, I wouldn't recommend you to use my model. Or, or, you, or you start removing bad Maybe experts, removing, uh, trying uh, to get to close to one. Yeah, and then. that's another option. Um, okay, all right. Uh, so here's one data set. Uh, it's called CCPP, Combined Cycle Power Plant. So in this data set, the task is to predict the hourly energy output of a, of a, of, 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 of a plant. Uh, power plant, Mifal, not at Zemach, from physical characteristics of the plant. Uh, this is, a, so to speak, an easy prediction problem. Uh, you see G2 is close to variance of Y, so the, the optimal mean squared error is, is small. Now I'm showing you several things. First of all, this is lambda 1 over M. This is the value, okay, so uh, it's, by itself it's a pretty good Ah, okay. This, this is this black line is the line that I don't know. This is choose a value for G two, solve the, the whole thing, compute the weights, and find and find out what's the mean squared of the resulting ensemble learner. I would like to choose a value of Q that where this black line finds its minimum. Okay. I don't have this black line. What I do have is either this or this is the residual row, no, this is the residual of, this residual is the norm of rho hat at some value of q minus its projection uh, of rho hat of q over v1 and v2 divided by the norm of rho hat of q as a function of q and I can, for example, try to find well this blue line which I can compute has its minimum, this is uh, this purple thing and in this example, I take this as, as my value of Q, and that's also a point where roughly I get a very good mean squared error. Okay? This is one place where the thing works very nicely. Here is an example where 
perfect prediction is not really possible. This is uh, also a famous data set. It's a data set from the NBA. You try to predict how many points uh, will a player score in the next game based on various characteristics of what he did in the past. You are not going to be able to predict that he will score exactly 25 points, but you can still do something. So you can see that uh, G2 is not very close to 1. Again, uh, these are the two values, uh, lambda 1 over m and, and the place where the blue line attains its minimum. And if you take, let's say, this value, yes, you're slightly off from the optimal, but not too much. Okay, remember we had a fully unsupervised setting. Uh, let me give you another example of a difficult uh, data set uh, for which we were not able to predict well. Uh, this is a true data set, yes, I didn't invent it. <laughs> <laughs> it's publicly available, okay? You're trying to predict how much time someone will spend, uh, 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 married people will spend in extramarital affairs, given various features of that person. Uh, so the predictions that we uh, 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 constructed were not able to predict this thing, uh, but in a fully unsupervised manner, our, our method also tells us that lambda 1 over m is, is, is small, and the place where the blue line attains its minimum is even smaller, so uh, just this diagnostic will tell us that for this data set, these linear predictors are probably not able to predict this uh, case well, so some of you have it for American affairs, proceed as you know. <laughs> at least uh, uh, with these features. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, good. Let's see. Ah, uh, outline removal is, is a crucial thing. Um, it's also related somewhat to sparse PCA in a way because. What I just told you is that the matrix C the matrix C, which is M by M, let's say it's approximately rank 1 or rank 2 under that assumption. Now, if one or two experts are way off, then uh, I can somehow, let's say, let's say that the first expert is way off, then I have a sub-matrix which is rank 1 or rank 2, uh, trying to find uh, 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 let's say the leading eigenvector uh, of a submatrix. Uh, uh, this is related to a sparse PCA problem. Uh, so, in short, I don't want to go into the exact details, but you can design various methods to detect outliers, to remove them. So we do that for, for, for some data sets. What I'm showing you is the result after we detected outliers and removed them. Uh, and so what I'm showing you here, for example, on some data sets, uh, okay, this data set should uh, be of interest to people like in academia who fly, especially from Austin, because this is about how much time will your flight be delayed given various things that you knew in the past. And you can see that uh, for this data set, out of the 10 experts that we constructed, uh, some were a, a way off. Some had a, a two means code that were very bad, others were very accurate. I didn't tell you how exactly we find outliers, but these three are detected as outliers, and we, when we remove them, uh, we are able to find the most accurate regressor much better. Uh, this, is a, this is one of the data sets from the protein challenge uh, that I discussed, and again, here we had 12 participants, two of them were way, way off, and when I removed them, the other ones were fairly accurate. I'm not able to find the best regressor, but I'm able to find one with a close by. Um, all right. Uh, ah, these are the results uh, of many different uh, uh, data sets. So, on the x-axis, I'm showing you the mean squared error of the oracle, the one that knew the ground truth and tried to construct the weights by just solving the least squares problem. And on the y-axis, that's the excess additional risk, the excess MSE o over this. If that would be zero, then I would be as good as a supervised setting. Purple is our method. Uh, black circles is the mean. Black uh, triangle is the median. 
In some cases, the mean is better than the median. In, uh, in some cases, it isn't. But in most cases, our method is lower. Lower is better. It's small and excess risk. So your method is better than super. I have another 500 slides to go. Your, your method is better than supervised choose choice of weights. I don't understand. I'm showing you how much worse I am over the ah over supervised. supervised. Okay. Yeah. What was the data, data set? It's uh, not in the white noise or in, uh, how did you? Ah, this is a, 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 what I'm showing you here is a summary of how many different data sets that we played with. Uh, this is for data sets for which we constructed the. Yes, the I'm asking lessons. how did you construct, ah, you constructed the data set or the? No, I took the publicly available data sets and mm -hmm. did them into training and test and the training and just playing the, you know, the standard uh, regressors like uh, 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 super vector regression. Uh, so what did you manually craft it here? Manually crafted is that we constructed the regressors ourselves. Let me let me go to the next slide. In this slide, this this is this is this, these are the experts from the uh, one of these dream data sets here. These are the black boxes. I don't know how they will construct them. Okay, and still our method is able to perform. Mm -hmm. So there were. 2,500 uh, samples, but for four different proteins. So there are four different regression challenges, and for all of them were either as good as mean or median or, 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 or better. What is the data set for this problem? The problem here is to predict the concentrations of various oh, different proteins. Right. proteins. Okay. All right. Is a uh, nonlinear combination of experts? I maybe don't know about nonlinear because I'm unsupervised, so. You know, I didn't try to compare how good in supervised, in supervised way. case you would be able to do nonlinearly, but even the most famous method or most popular methods in the supervised case, like boosting and, and, and backing are linear. So, uh, you know. Shallow, shallow. Okay. Shallow. Uh, okay. <laughs> I have another example with neural networks. <laughs> so. And here's another example. So here the predictors are neural networks. What we did <coughs> is that um, uh, this is a startup company. Uh, they gave us, uh, they constructed for us six uh, deep neural networks. Uh, this is for uh, the problem of a bounding box. Uh, so you have an image you, and you want a bounding box for the object. So they constructed the, 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 the networks for us. Uh, they trained on one data set, Pascal, but the, the test data is, is, is Coco. And uh, there are several categories, so there are uh, several different uh, uh, mean score levels, but again, in all of them, or in most of them, our method, how to combine these six neural networks is uh, uh, typically better than just simple averaging. Uh, and I, I can even tell you that two of their networks were pretty bad, and the others were pretty good. All of this unsupervised, and uh, visually, so the red are the predictors of the, the, the predictions of the six different neural networks. Uh, blue is the grand truth, which is probably an averaging of human annotations, and the green is our uh, weighted averaging. On the few images I saw, in some cases, I would prefer the green over the blue. <laughs> but uh, uh, so don't trust people necessarily. Uh, all right. Um, so to conclude. Yeah. Again, the setup here. So the setup here is, is as follows: uh, the company constructed for us uh, six black boxes. They, I know that they use the Pascal VOC, but I, I only see the predictions on, on, on Coco. No, 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 sorry, sorry, I didn't ask the question. My yeah. question is, when you run your uh, uh, CNN, yes. you do have measures. You didn't know it. Ah, but you okay. do have measures how the CNN worked. So my question is, uh, can you compare your results to what the like, common...
So in, in this experiment, what I used from the CNN, the CNN just gave me the XY of the bounding box, and that's the quantity that I used. But if you ask, uh, I didn't use. I, so if the CNN gives me a measure of reliability or some, I don't know, confidence, then I may want to use that as well. That would be the next one. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Um, let's see. I want to wrap it up. Ah, so I didn't. Uh, 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 okay, so I didn't tell you that there are also various other methods to try to find if the assumption that I made on the average of h i h equals zero is, is is satisfied or not. Uh, you can ask me offline if you want. But to summarize, even without any label data, you can still do ensemble regression. Uh, I presented the framework to do it based on an assumption of uncorrelated errors, and uh, that led to a method linear aggregation of regressors with theoretical support. The method is simple to implement, it works well in practice on, at least on the limited uh, data set that we played with. Uh, we're working on how to extend it to a semi-supported <coughs> setting where at least for some of the data we have labels. Uh, to make it practically you also have to handle missing data, for example in the um, Earthquakes, uh, not all stations measure all events, there are some geographical issues. Uh, also in the stock data, not all experts uh, give estimates on all stocks, etc. Um, this is it. Thank you. Yes, since we asked many questions, I knew we were about to kick down, so if yeah. anybody has one okay. question. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Thank you. Um,